This week on Fishette, John shows us how to find and catch pressured walleye roaming shallow water when other anglers head deep on hard-hit basin fisheries. Got him that time. Same fish. I, I mean, that that fish just, look at that, jumped right out of the hole for me and then tried to find his way back to the hole. <laughs> look at that. What a great way to start a season. That is awesome right there. You know, I missed this fish and it was so frustrating because he came up two or three times and I, I just kept missing him. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. I'd pull it away from him, he'd nip at it, then he got the bait off there. And I just quick reeled up because at a certain point, when fish start going up and down like this one did, you realize all of a sudden that, you know what? I don't think I got bait anymore because he wasn't attacking. He was just swimming up and down. So I reeled up quick, checked. I was right. I didn't have any bait. We'll just let that guy go We're early in the early in the day here. But I realized I didn't have any bait. I reeled up. I rebaited quick, dropped it back down, and bam, there he was. That's cool. First fish of the year right there. That's an awesome walleye. What a great way to start. Right on it. There he is, right there. Got him. <laughs> this one feels like a little bit better fish. That one just railed in from the side. Look at that. Oh, yeah, it is a better fish. Come here. Come on. Yep, got him. Just don't want to get nailed there with his fin or the hooks. Look at that. Awesome fish. Got a little bit of a beat up tail there. That's awesome. Look at that guy. Man, that guy came railing in from the side. That's one of the things I'll tell you about fishing. This shallow water is it's not the, the same game as we're gonna play a little bit later in the year when these fish get out deeper and we can watch the whole process happen because your cone is wider, so you see those fish coming in. Sometimes this one here, man, sometimes they'll just come in and all of a sudden, bam, there they are and whack. And that's what happened right there. That's an awesome fish right there. Let them go and I'm gonna explain to you how I ended up where I'm at today. Because I think this is one of the biggest things about fishing high pressured water early in the year. Red Lake is known for being the first place everybody goes. And it's because it's shallow and it freezes fast. And that's, and it's loaded with walleyes, right? So it drew crowds this weekend that were unprecedented. Man, I, from what I heard, I they were, they were saying there were traffic jams in Kelleher and, and in Black Duck and, and it was just crazy up here. But most, what, most of what happened is guys started moving out a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper. And there's a whole pack of houses out there. And if you go out there another three quarters of a mile, maybe a mile, it is Swiss cheese out there. I mean, those fish were so pressured. And the first thought that goes through your mind a lot of times is, well, I gotta go deeper. They push those fish deeper. Here's what I've done this morning. We are fishing shallower. What, what you gotta know is sometimes you'll get those schools of fish out there and when you're on these subtle breaks on a red lake where out there it might only be 10 feet, here I'm in eight feet and that's a mild difference, those fish, they'll come back shallow. They don't necessarily follow the progressions you see in your deeper big lakes, okay? In your deeper lake situations where you get that big drop off, those fish will tend to migrate to the deeper side throughout the season. But on a basin style lake like this, where it's just a dish pan, once you get out past the, the beginning breaks, okay? Right now you're fishing eight feet of water right here and two, a mile that way, it might be 10 feet of water. And another mile, it might be 11 feet of water. Those fish are willing to swim back in. So don't overlook this. All I'm doing is I'm fishing inside of where everybody fished. It was a shorter drive out. We drilled holes and said, let's just get to an area where these fish might have been pushed to that hasn't been fished. There were no holes drilled in this area, but right out there, there's been a ton of them. So we just banked on the fact they got pushed in. Now, if this wouldn't have worked, I might have just gone east. I might have gone west. I might have gone north or south and just kept working around that area where that huge pack was. They were all catching fish this weekend for a while, but by the end of the weekend, it was slowing down. So you knew those fish had moved somewhere. So ultimately, just keep that in mind. Look for those areas in these dishpan situations where those fish are gonna get pushed to, but don't be afraid to go shallower. Because a lot of times shallower is just as good as going deeper in this scenario. Right there, come on, hit it. There he is, got him. 
feels like pretty good fish. <laughs> it's so cool when you get in this shallow water because it happens so quick. Look at that, another great eye. Let's pick him up out of there like that. Look at that, another awesome fish. Man, I'll tell you, there's so many of these fish in Red Lake, it's just cool, you know? I mean, you just have the ability to just sit and catch fish. And that guy stuck him pretty good, let's see here. But this guy, again, man, it, it happened so fast. He just came in. You know, he can see the bait, he can hear the bait. There's a lot of things that are happening down there with that glow spoon that are putting you in a position of that fish, seeing it, hearing it, coming in and whacking it. Let's get him out of here. And then I'll show you exactly what I'm using today. Number one, I think pink in so many situations is awesome, but on Lake of, or Lake of the Woods or Red Lake, man, I think pink is, is right toward the top, you know, every single day. I think gold can be up there too, you know, any of your glow colors. But man, I love this pink glow spoon. I'm using the eighth ounce size today. A couple things you'll see me doing throughout the day. Number one, the glow spoon, you've seen it for a couple years now. You put a glow stick in the back of it and it illuminates the bait. So anytime you're fishing a dirty water situation and you take a red lake, you know, if that wind blows before it freezes up, it's always a little bit more dingy. It takes a little bit of time for things to settle down. It's the same on Lake of the Woods. Any of your stained color water, stain colored water man i'll tell you what this is a deadly bait on because it illuminates that entire lure and then there's little tungsten beads down in the bottom of it because it's made out of plastic it's it's a crankbait material but when you drop this down it flies down because it's got tungsten beads in it that gives you your rattles so you got a rattle and you've got a nice swimming action, okay? And then you add that light stick and you illuminate it so these fish can see it. And that, that in my opinion, makes all the difference. Is you, you know, you look at all the different things that makes a fish strike. And I always look at it and I say, okay, they gotta be able to see it. They really need to, to feel some kind of action, okay? They need, to, they need to see something in the water. They need to see it because it's bright. They're able to see it. They need to see an action. They need to, they need to hear it. They need to feel it in their lateral line. And I'll tell you what, this, this glow spoon, it does all of those things. And if you put all those things together, you're going to catch fish. And, and that's why these last few years, since we brought this lure out, it's become my go-to. I mean, it just flat out catches fish for me everywhere we go. It comes in a whole variety of awesome colors. And you know, if you're fishing clear water, there's there's colors that are going to match your bait fish and illuminate it. If you're fishing stained water like we are here, there's your bright stuff like what I'm fishing today. And man, these fish are finding it, and that's the big thing. If they can find it, you can usually catch them. There he is. Got him. I went down and banged on the bottom for a little bit because I could not get this fish to bite. And after I banged on the bottom for a while, all of a sudden he finally snapped it. And he actually surprised the heck out of me because he came from the side, this bigger fish. Look at that. He, he was here, rolled around, meandered around with me, couldn't get him to bite. And what I did is I went down and I just pounded the bottom a bunch of times and then I lifted it back up and I didn't see him. He was gone. I didn't know where the heck he had went. Well, here's the deal. He must have just lined up over on a side, waited for it to bounce back up again, and he charged it. And he just drilled it. What an awesome fish. Look at that. Man, it just goes to show you that sometimes just changing some of your cadences and playing around with a few different things, and all of a sudden it can make a fish like that snap it. What an awesome day. It's just been a great day out here. Man, I'll tell you what, this early ice thing, it can be a really big deal. You can catch a lot of fish doing it, but there's a couple things you wanna do. When the fish are pressured, get away from the crowds and use baits that these fish can find because they're just meandering out here. And that's just the MO on Red Lake. Awesome, Red Lake walleye. What a great day of fishing. Get out of here, buddy. That's awesome. What a fun day of fishing that is.